So on the bench today is something that should have been on the bench several years ago. So this is an Adastra, strangely enough, look it's a 952972, you tell me. So yeah, this was brought round about three and a half years ago. It's It was in a sawmill, uh, well one of the lines in a sawmill, um, buried somewhere dirty and hot and dusty and noisy and yeah the the one of the lads who works on that line um asked if i could repair it uh, so he brought it round and when he dropped it off he actually said that the it had been repaired before apparently the um the maintenance personnel on the site had had it sent off at some point for repair uh, but the way things were then uh, it wasn't they weren't gonna they weren't willing to <clears throat> send it off again um, so anyway when he brought it round he actually said the lads because there's several blokes about five six blokes I think work on that line on each shift so between the three shifts they'd all just chuck like a fiver or a tenner in or something and basically they'd, they'd eBay this and found the exact same model of amplifier so they just went and brought a new one um, so I literally just took the cover off just to see what was inside it and it is sat in the corner in that direction for about three and a half years. Um, whilst working on some of those monocore amps, the PA900S, I'm, I'm working on thinking I've seen this before. And yeah, the PA900S, all of this is identical. The amplifier, heatsink, everything is identical. And the actual, just having a quick look at the circuitry, the parts and everything on the amp board are the same. And uh, they're just slightly different. They've got the VU meter at the front rather than just this basic power signal peak meter. And because this is the mixing amplifier, the PA900s are only a mono input. Whereas this has got just the circuitry for mic and dual inputs. And then the controls, obviously, for mixing them um, for the actual output. So, yeah. But so it makes you wonder, is this a monocore license design or something? But yeah, oddly enough, all the PA900s I've had, it's been this transistor here that's shorted. Now, if I put this meter on 2K mode, so you have to unplug the output transformer because you'll get crossfeed through it otherwise and it'll all appear shorted. If I go to this side, ooh. Oh, there we are, I must have been touching the heatsink or something. So yeah, like base to emitter. As you can see, I'm just getting standard diode drops. And if I go collector to emitter, open circuit. So these two transistors are fine. Now, because these are in parallel, I can't tell exactly which transistor is shorted. But as you can see, if I go base to emitter, base to collector, Short circuit, and unlike, say, a normal uh, follow amplifier when one transistor shorts, they all blow. Because these are in parallel um, via a transformer, um, push-pull arrangement like, <clears throat> when one shorts, it doesn't really take the others out because you're limited by the coupling of the transformer. And the transistor that is parallel to this one then just sees no load at all because this one's shorted. So yeah, I'm going to be interested to see if it is just this transistor that's shorted. Anyway, either way, um, they're all going to be quite old and toasted by now. So I shall probably change all of them uh, if I feel like it. We shall see. Um, yeah, I mean, it is one of those things transistors really basically work or they don't. Uh, it's not like valves where they get tired, but they do have a thing called thermal cyclic curving, which is basically as the die inside heats up and contracts, it's slowly, it's basically like weathering almost. It just slowly uh, stresses it, you know, it, it's heat and contracting, heat and contracting. It's like bending a piece of metal backwards and forth. Eventually, at some point, it will snap. So I might just change one. I might change them all. Um, if, if there is a pair shorted, which I'm going to say isn't, I'm going to say it's just for one transistor, I'll change them all. But um, I'm curious to see if it's this one. 
and if it's this one again it makes you wonder why is it why would it yeah so we shall see um and yeah and if it is that one i who can say why why would it always be that one it's just odd isn't it but uh let's pull it apart it's just poking it don't know if the camera shows it up it, it's got like this real nice kind of black film on everything um everything around the place as i think a lot of it's from like the forklift trucks the uh the, the soot and diesel fumes just sort of cover everything in this black fine black powder so um yeah tear it down and see what it's like inside so the board is out and let's zoom in a bit so we've got burn resistor berry burn resistor and a crusty burn resistor so there are flecks of colour left on that one if I can get reading I'm measuring 57 ohms um, and yeah looking at it, it looks like it is a 56 ohm this one here looks like it's hard to say red red brown maybe is that 220 ohm yeah it's measuring 220 this one here this little one is so faded um i cannot it just all looks like it's sort of blacks and browns i mean in circuit it's measuring 780 maybe an 820 ohm it does kind of look like the first band may well have been a violet, but uh, if I flip it over, there's some interesting, so I don't read, these are on the zero V rail and they just seem to feed me some regulators and stuff, so I don't really know why they appear to have gotten that hot. Um, but this, this section here, oh, come back a bit, so you can see, if I find one of them big resistors, can you see it just here? Where am I? Here, where my finger is. Yeah, all wobbling around, and see, so yeah, you can see some some heat stress on there. Um, I don't know if this is factory. Oh, where am I? I don't know if these two resistors are factory or not. Apparently, it had been repaired before. Uh, and yeah, looking at it, if you come, I'm going to guess whoever it was just replaced these before, because these transistors don't look like they've ever been replaced, because they have the, I don't know if you can see it, so yeah, that's machine bent legs, that is, they're all like that, when you put transistors in by hand, you wouldn't even attempt to get that bend in them, and you wouldn't get it like that even if you tried, so yeah, you just push them in and like, bend them to fit so those have never been changed so i'm going to say it's these are like some dropper resistors for some regulators and stuff it, having a cursory look at the board is what it appears to be and if you look at all the other resistors on this board they're all blue five band types whereas these three resistors here which are toasty are the standard beige four band type resistors so I'm going to say the last time this was repaired, it was just them that were replaced. So I should replace them and figure out which one of these transistors is shorted. I really, I really do hope it's this one, because then that'll mean every single time I've had one of these amplifier boards out, it's always been that transistor for some reason. Don't know why, they all seem the same load. Um, yeah, uh, who can say? So anyway, let's pull it apart some more and see what we get. So you can see how the um can't find the bits I want and there. So you can sort of see how damaged the board is around these joints. So I'm gonna to have to get creative. But for now, let's desolder. And that one. Without uh 
Without killing what's left. This solder's gone so crystallised and dry from heat. I think what I'm going to have to do there is actually put some new solder on first just to get the old solder to come up better yeah sort of the um, it's it's got so hot it's actually like formed a thick oxide skin so I'm not entirely sure which bits I'm taking out of them ones that one there I think yeah look, it doesn't the new solder doesn't even really want to um, Bind. Try and get that flux on there, and I've got a better chance of getting that old stuff up then, because it's it present. It's not really lifting. It's just sort of taking the skin off. I think those are the ones I want. I best check. So let's try that again. Should and that's better. It would appear. Of course, you get a big blob of solder on, and you can't see exactly what it is you're trying to unsolder anymore. And that one, and that should do it, hopefully. So, man, this board's crusty. It's uh, yeah, old boards, pads trying to lift. I have to get the uh, wire out here. Get creative, just trying to reconstruct where the pads have lifted. Um, this bit's come out okay. But yeah, so you can see I've took two transistors out here. It turned out it was that one. I thought I'll take that one out first. That one's actually all right. It was that one. So there you go. I've got some... Uh, Dug through my stock of resiste, uh, resistors and found a 56 and a 220 and a yeah whatever that was another 56 I think wasn't it <clears throat> yeah so I've the 220 the crusty 220 I've upped it this 56 is the same power rating and the um, 8, oh bloody hell, what was it? I cannot remember the other one, whatever, whatever it was. I can't quite see, it looks like an 820. I think it was an 820, wasn't it? Yeah, the 820, instead of using a crappy quarter watt which is just going to bake I've dug out a nice I don't know is that half watt one watt I think these are like three watts so anyway yeah it'll um it'll all be good after that so the next one is to solder in the resistors man this thing is just filthy everything every time you touch it stuff just falls off of it um yeah yeah, crusty old amp. So yeah, solder the new bits in and shove her on the dim bulb tester and see what happens. That's all the parts in and you can see if I come down here, I've had to get a bit creative with some leads because so many of these pads were lifted and bits of track missing so I've had to sort of reroute where the track should be by bending the leads round and on a couple of bits, scraping some track off and coming over because the pad's gone. But no, it's it's all good. I did annoyingly, just as I got finished, I put um, these two resistors in the wrong way around, so I had to take them all out. Luckily enough, um, didn't damage anything particularly doing it and still had enough lead to root them there. So... <clears throat> Yeah, all good. I've only bothered changing the one transistor. Uh, put that one back in, changed its position. Um, yeah, let's put a new transistor in. So next stage is bang it all back together and fire it up. 
Right then, so it's plugged into the dim bulb tester. Where are you? There you are. Let's zoom in on that. And okay, that's good. That's very good. Okay, it didn't catch fire. That's always a good start. Dimble testers glowing dim, which is good. So let's see what we've got in the way of bias, shall we? Help if I put it on the right setting, wouldn't it? Eight. Hey. <clears throat> Bloody hell! What am I doing? So. Yeah, five millivolts, two on the new transistor because it's a slightly different three and a half. Three and a half. Perfect. So yeah, uh, I guess it's just put some audio through it and see if it works. I had to take it apart again because all I was getting was hiss and if you really cranked one of the inputs flat out you could almost hear audio trying to come through, but not quite. Kind of like that open signal chain thing. And anyway, as soon as I took the board out, flipped it upside down, one of these capacitors here somewhere had just broken free. As I've been putting it in, because it, that cap wasn't sat pressed down against the board, it poked the leg through and broke the solder joint. Quick resolder and. Working again, so there you are. Now put it back together for a second time, but that's it, all working. So, yeah, that would have been embarrassing, wouldn't it? If I'd sent it off, said, Yeah, it's working, there you are, use it when you need it, and uh, it didn't work, but now it works. So, I should do my usual anyway. Um, I shall cook it in a bit, put it on the dummy load, and just run it absolutely flat out until it begs for mercy. Oh, Ooh, yes, because it's all loose. So, yeah, anyway, that's another one fixed. Um, couple of hours really success so as always catch you next time hmm what is that 32 volts into 8 ohms it's about 120 watts not quite clipping peak light is just beginning to light up what you can't appreciate is how good this smells. This thing is, yeah, that's cooking nicely. All's good.